everybody, it's Tyler here at the University of North Dakota Signature Event here at Mall of America. I'm checking out 295Y Party coming in out of California. It's a very uh, slick uh, C-curve robot that they have here. Just played their first match, looked phenomenal on the field, scoring all over the place. Uh, overall, we're going to be talking a lot in regards to the, how they got their compression right in terms of uh, bringing the blocks through uh, for this. Obviously, a lot of wheels that have gone into this. We'll be talking about maybe some future iterations, some cool sensors that they're doing on this robot. They got a nice lift as well, too. There's a lot to dig into here early in the pushback season. So let's learn more about party coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Drill Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Lucas, let's dive more into this robot here and break down some of this. Uh, talk about your drive, uh, what you chose for that, and then uh, a little bit more on your scraper back in the front here. Yeah, so for our drive, we're running a 450 RPM drive on 3.25 inch wheels. Um, and that's working really great for us because we have a lot of speed. So we can, even though we can't go under the long goals, we can get around really fast and get around defense because a lot of camping in the long goals and stuff uh, makes it hard for you to score where you want all the time. So the speed is just really nice. And then moving on to our match load mech, our scraper, uh, just something unique about it, it kind of it goes down like that and it wedges the balls up and then they roll in and through our intake and it's just braced so it cannot bend and another thing we do there is use two pistons so that one side can't go down uh, more than the other which just improves consistency as well as these screws that protrude out because that allows for it to not get caught in the little lip of the loader at the bottom. Early on the signature event, we're already starting to see a lot of defense out there. Uh, what made you want to go with all Omni wheels and maybe not consider like a traction wheel or something like that on your bot? Yeah, uh, just from a driving standpoint, uh, he really prefers it um, because you can kind of like, it's a lot better for those tight corners. Um, taking that from over under where there is those low pipes, it's just really nice getting around those fast with a uh, drift drive. Nikhil, let's talk about this awesome uh, intake system that you have here. Uh, watching your first match is a very efficient and fluid set of scoring uh, uh, sets that you have here. So walk me through uh, how you got your compression right and br break down the system for me. Okay, yeah. So first thing is we're kind of running a C-shape intake that's running at 1200 RPM. And because it's running at such a fast speed, we had to really fine tune the compression. So some things we did is so right here we have a rubber band roller and because the um, where bands are super compressible. We did that so that the balls don't get jammed in when we're match loading at such a fast speed. And then um, over here near the top, we cut the flex wheels. Um, so we cut some of these like uh, inserts right here and that allows the flex wheel to be a lot more compressible so it doesn't jam as much when it's in these tight spaces. And then another thing we did is we added like rubber bands in the back here that compress it against these wheels over here. And especially it helps when our intake is going up to score on the long goals. And um, oh yeah. and then the last thing we have are kind of some zip ties. So it's kind of hard to see, but we have some zip ties that are kind of go throughout the whole bot. And what they do is they allow the ball to be centered so that the tall edges of the blocks can't get caught under the middle wheel. So that way our intake doesn't jam at all because the block is in the same position at all times. How long did it take you to get like this compression right? Like how many different iterations did you go through to, to get it going? I think it did take us a while. Actually, it took almost like a month to kind of just configure the whole intake, kind of thinking about different ways we can uh, tune the compression. And then we ultimately came to kind of centering the blocks was the most effective option. And, and Mason, speaking of uh, robot choices and stuff too, like why why did your team uh, go with this arc type of robot as well? There's obviously, we've seen a few different types of, I don't know if meta is quite the right, right word yet as it's early on in the season, but uh, why did your team go with this overall arc type for robot? Uh, yeah, we mainly went with this type of kind of C-shaped or snail uh, robot because we wanted to prioritize being able to hold a, like a block or two and match loading and being, being able to score that really, really fast. Uh, with some horde bots or like a C-shaped bot, or sorry, S-shaped bot, it kind of takes a lot longer to score and you don't have that speed to score your whole intake before defense pushes you away. So especially in our last match, we really wanted, uh, really helped, we really want to be able to score everything at once um, and not have to worry about defense pushing us away. Lucas, I noticed you got a, a lift on the front here. We got some pneumatics. Can you talk more about that? And I'd love to see if we can put some blocks through as well too and kind of check out how the whole system process works. Yeah, so we can go ahead and put that up. Um, 
So the way that this lift works, it's just two 75 millimeter pistons. And one thing that really helps it to work are these kind of prongs on that plastic piece. So you can see when you put it down, um, it sits in between these flex wheels, but then when you put it up, it allows it to kind of bridge that gap, which helps the uh, high goals and mid goals be more consistent and not uh, very much. And then you can see that we run these uh, color optical sensors so that we can stop the blocks um, because we don't have a traditional ball lock. We rather just stop this um, portion of the intake. And Dasha, Lisa's great into talking about some of the sensors that are on your robot. You know, we mentioned the optical a little bit here. Talk to me more about why you chose that route, how it works, and I know a couple other great sensors on this robot too. Yeah, so starting with the optical, if you run the code, you can see when we spin the intake, when it gets to the top, it's going to stop the top intake from spinning. So it allows us to hold a lot more blocks without worrying about the spinning out at the end. And so the reason we chose optical over a distance sensor is because optical sensors also allow us to see the color of the blocks. So in scales, for example, where you have the two different colors and in uh, matches too, you could intake all the blocks from the match loader and then uh, stop it as soon as you see the wrong color block, which is a lot more efficient to score. Looking at this, obviously this is early on in the pushback season. Are, do you have some other like you know plans brewing in terms of what changes you might want to make uh, looking at future events so far in the season? Uh, we want to add, um, so if I go over the distance sensors real quick, we have distance sensors on the sides, uh, on both sides of the robot right here as well. So that allows us to track the position of the robot and reset during skills. So what we want to do is add two on every side instead, and that will allow us to uh, get the angle of the robot as well. So it's a lot less reliant on the setup of the robot during uh, autonomous and in skills. So that way we could essentially put the robot in any angle, any position, and it will work essentially perfect because of the odometry. Is there anything uh, mechanically wise you guys are looking at making changes for at all? Oh, we're also planning to add, uh, we want to add a de-scoring mech because we realized that uh, during matches, if the other alliance squeezes our balls in the middle, we're essentially forced to push their balls towards the control bonus. And we want to de-score their balls before scoring ours so that way we get the bonus from the controls. Well, Party, you got a great first match, so we appreciate you taking the time to tell us more about your robot here. We can't wait to see how you do throughout the rest of this. Uh, and, of course, for the rest of the pushback season, we'll be following you the whole way. Best of luck here. Thanks for telling us more about your team. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.